Hey guys, it's been a while since I've actually been in front of the camera, so uh, it's it's nice to at least have a little bit of time. Listen, before we get into today's video, I just want to say that uh, I want you guys to watch it all the way through to the end. Uh, we've got a couple of messages, or I have a couple of messages that I want to share with you guys. So I uh, hope you stick around for that, and I'll see you guys later. Enjoy the video. All right, so we're going to keep going with the tutorial series here. Again, we're going to be in the RP Action RPG series. Now, yes, this is another voice tutorial, but uh, after this, I'm not really sure if I'll get another chance at making a voice tutorial. So again, uh, I'm not really sure about my timing, but uh, just in case, Starting May 1, we will be uh, bringing up a Patreon series. So if you want to support the channel and, you know, help us out financially, then that would be much appreciated. Again, that's a Patreon campaign starting May the 1st, 2018. And another point that I want to make, this one's going to happen a lot earlier. The channel will be going through a complete and utter name change. So, uh, and again, uh, there's been new content this year. We did say that we are going to do more gaming stuff for this channel. And so gaming and games development, obviously the name can't stay as it is. Uh, so we're going to change that. And we are going to do that around mid-April or early April. So not that long to go. Uh, so yeah, April is going to be the name change. May, we've got the Patreon coming up. So let's get into this video. What we're going to do is... Oh, Let's work on doing health and actually doing more than just uh, enemies getting shot down in one hit. So this is what we have so far. Let's just play the game and see what we have. I just let it load up for a second. Here we go. So we have the movement. We have the shooting. We're going to fix that in this video, actually, the offsets. Uh, if you are using my visual assets, then by all means use use them uh, the folder does get updated or I'm trying to update the folder as often as possible uh, but right now when we shoot at enemies or when we melee attack enemies uh, nothing really happens and the offsets a bit off so let's uh, fix that what we're going to be working with mainly however is are the state uh, ranged attack the melee attack the objects in general as well as the parent projectile and that's really all that we will be working with today we won't be writing too much code however there will be a little bit of repetition but let's get started with the uh, players adjustment first so let's go to this step and let's have a look at this the horizontal offset will be cell let's see what happens if we use cell divided by two so basically half and for up, I think that's okay. How big is the cell size? Cell size is 32. And our player sprite is... How big is our player sprite? It's 16. So, okay. I think uh, we should just use divided by 2 in all of them. Cell divided by 2. Let me center this. And down here as well. Cell divided by 2. If that's the case, then maybe the horizontal should be divided by four instead. Let's see how that looks. I just want to fill this in so that I don't have to make a video exclusively just for changing these values. Uh, I'm just doing the, I'm just doing them just so that we can, yeah, that, that doesn't look right. Uh, that looks right so far, which is good, uh, but these don't. So let's divide them. Let's use the half see what that looks like. I have a feeling, yeah, divided by 4 is 8, so yeah, okay, so divided by 2 is fine. Or at least it looks fine enough for now, anyway. So let's work with that. Let's get into the main bulk of the tutorial. So we're going to start with object collision. And I've already got my notes here, so let's get started here. We're going to create a health variable. And this is a default health variable. And we're going to say health equals 1. So the default value is going to be 1, whether it's immortal or friendly, neutral, or an enemy. So that's really all that it is. And then for the player, we're going to work with this in, in order, I guess. We're going to add a couple of stats here. We're going to have the health stat, of course. And let's set their health 
to let's set the player health to four. I'm not sure why I picked four, but uh, you guys can choose whatever value you want, whatever value suits you. And of course, at the same time, the attack power. We'll just use we'll just use that attack power uh, because we already have an, an attack variable and the power variable. I'm going to set aside for something else. So attack power. Um, I'm going to say two. Just uh, just for my personal. Uh, it's just my personal take on it. Uh, if you guys want to use whatever values you want, you know, of course, feel free to put those values in. And that's all for the player for now. Let's move on to the parent enemy. And in the step event, what we're going to do actually is we're going to say <clears throat> if, again, uh, as the note says here, if health is less than, oops, less than zero so if it's zero or less we're simply going to destroy the instance instance underscore destroy and we're not going to put any parameters in we're just going to destroy the instance and that's all all right we'll close that we're done with the parent enemy for now uh, with the object enemy and the big enemy we don't need to do anything for them so that's okay now with the parent projectile, what we're going to do is we're going to go first into the create event and we are going to create a local power vari uh, sorry, a, an object power variable. And we're going to use the name power and we're going to default that to zero. Oop, done. Now here in the, in the object collision event, not the step event, the object collision event, we're going to say, we're going to create a local variable, so var. And I'm just going to use an, a slightly adjusted version of that power equals power. So basically this, whatever value this is, that's the value that we're going to have for this local variable. The reason for that is actually if we try to use power here in this statement, it's going to look for a power variable with the other objects. So just something to be aware of. All right, so according to this, we're going to need an if statement. If the uh, collision type, collision, not collision type, object type, it should be. Object type is not collision type. Collision type dot, and again, the notes say immortal. So collision type dot immortal then we're going to take health away. So what we're going to do is we're going to say other dot. Uh, actually, no, we don't need to type other. We just need to say health minus equals underscore power. So we're going to use the local power variable and we're going to take the enemy, in this case, the enemy or the player's health away. So that's just that for now. Let's close out. We're, we're done with most of the video, actually. We're going to now go into the ranged attack section. And in a similar way, we are going to create, just like before, we're going to create a local variable, so var. And we're going to create a local power, power variable in this case. Again, we can use the same names, seeing as local variables are usable only in the script or in that specific code block that you mentioned it. So here, power equals attack power. And then here, when we create the object, we need to feed in that power variable. So if we open up the parent projectile, we have in the create event a power variable here. What we're going to do when we create it using these scripts is we're simply going to say power equals this underscore power. So when we create it, we're going to adjust all of these variables here. And at the same time, we're going to give it the power, the attack power that we have, which we defined up here. Now for the melee attack, it's going to be the exact same thing. So again, we're going to say var underscore power equals attack power. Of course, if you want to, if you want your melee attacks and your range attacks to be different, you could always add in some extra 
extra features. So in this case, let's say a uh, melee attack is more powerful than the range attack. All right, so in this case, I'm going to say attack power multiplied by two. Uh, this is just an example. Of course, you can change it if you want. And again, down here, we're going to say power equals underscore power. See, the good thing about creating local variables is, or at least in this case, for the melee attack and the range attack is that we can adjust them without actually changing the overall attack power or the attack value. It's, um, it's much cleaner than having two separate variables because you have to do the same thing anyway. And variables take up memory to begin with. So even though it doesn't take up much um, a single variable doesn't take up much memory, it's still much more preferred uh, because if I close this for a second, you can actually put another variable here uh, called modifier and uh, you can have a like a variable modifier. And I actually made a tutorial video uh, a long time ago now uh, outlining uh, being able to do variable damage, but we won't be covering that in this series. Uh, so let's, uh, I should have just uh, minimized the window instead of closing it, but uh, let's build the game again. Let's now move into the next section. Oh, object enemy health. Oh, okay. I haven't done that yet. We need to go back. We need to, I think I jumped ahead. Yes, I jumped ahead a bit. We actually need to put in a health variable here. Uh, so object enemy. We need to, for each enemy, what we're going to do, let me just scroll up, I'll close that. For each enemy, what we're going to do is we're going to add in, it, we're going to add in our own health variable. So I guess for the regular enemies, we'll put in four. That seems fair. And then for the big enemies, we'll put in, I don't know, what's a good number? We'll, we'll just double that, we'll just go with eight. And let's play that. Of course, the the intended would be to create these stats with along with uh, default values in the parent object, so that just in case uh, we forget to override them, we at least have something that we can work with. So here we go. We have enemies, and we can attack them. So that was a bit that was a bit powerful. Let's go back. Uh, I think we have no enemies in this room. Okay. Come back in. Okay, here we go. Oh, all right. So it looks like we missed something. Let's go back to the projectile here. Aha. So what's happening here is we're actually taking health away, but we're still telling the other instance to destroy as well. So what we should do is actually get rid of this line. Actually, let's just comment it out. And Let's play the game, because I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I might have set the attack power to too high, um, and so I might be wrong. But let's see what happens now. No enemies. Okay, we have some enemies. Uh, we have all the enemies here. Okay, so now we can do a lot more. Uh, we have much higher attack power. Let's see what happens if we melee. Okay, nice. Takes a couple of hits, a couple of melee hits. Uh, but uh, in general, it works. So that's all. That's all for this video. So now we can. We actually have enemies that can get hurt. Uh, in the next section, we're going to flip that on its head, and we're going to create uh, two new states: uh, state hurt, and of course the death state, which will eventually lead to players uh, game over or playing a special animation, we're also going to have the enemies also attack the player and deal damage as well. So uh, those are coming up in, if not one video, then over the next two videos. But of course, that's all for me today, and I hope to see you in the next session. Bye. All right, so if you're watching this, uh, I first want to say thank you so much for being a part of our YouTube community. And thank you so much for being patient with me and watching my video content and our video content, uh, even though I haven't been able to make a voice tutorials for quite a long time. Uh, actually, before we move on from where we are now, this is where I've been living for the past, uh, I think since September last year. 
uh, I did go back to Australia for, I think, two weeks, around about two weeks for Christmas and New Year's. And obviously, uh, I mean, that's a time to be with family. Um, I didn't make, oh, well, I didn't make too many videos. In fact, I made no videos uh, during that time period. But uh, here's where I've been staying. If we have a look over here, uh, that's my workstation. Uh, my laptop here that I've been using to make all of the tutorial videos. There's no space for the mouse, so the mouse actually lives uh, underneath. And then if we come over here, uh, there's, a, there's a space for a lot of my stuff there. Controllers, mostly books, books and pens. My graphics tablet is also here. Uh, what else is here? And then over here we have a, a bunch of uh, clothes here. Uh, so, th this is where I've been staying for the past couple of months, past few months. And actually, uh, that's not the point here. Uh, what I did want to say was that uh, coming mid-April 2018, so I don't know what, when you guys are watching this video, but starting uh, 2018, mid-April, this channel is going to change its name from Blaze Arts, just Blaze Arts, just me, to a completely new name. So we're going through a name change uh very soon very soon and also starting may 2018 so after uh we have a name change we're also going to be starting a patreon campaign now it is completely optional you guys don't have to be a part of it but uh hey if you guys want to be part of an exclusive community and get access to exclusive rewards then by all means uh support starts from one dollar a month so that's all for me guys Hopefully you guys stick around for more video content and of course uh, we're going to keep developing things. Leave comments and uh, leave a like and comment for each video and of course don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. Anyway guys that's all from me and I'll see you guys later. Bye.